the Slinky Project. Our task is to see different types of waves that are made by an earthquake. Materials, Slinky on a pipe. That's this thing right here, about six feet long. And then we also have a Snaky. A Snaky is a thin Slinky. It looks like this. It's much more stiff and rigid. Some measuring tape and a stopwatch. There are four types of waves made by a quake. They shake the ground at different ways. For instance, one type is up and down, another type is side to side. They all start at the same time and spread out in all directions. However, they travel at different speeds. You will make the different kinds of waves with the springs. Procedure. Number one, the fastest type of wave is a P wave. P stands for primary, which stands refers to the fact that it is the first wave to hit you. This kind of wave is made by using the slinky on a pipe. Push and pull the end of the slinky just a couple of inches very quickly. You will see a compression wave go down the slinky. Now push and pull several inches and see a more dramatic wave. So here we go. I'm just gonna move my hand like this. And you can see the wave go down. That's a P wave. Number two, the second kind of wave is called an S wave. S stands for secondary. These waves go up and down. So we can use a snaky to model the wave. Shake the end of the snaky up and down rapidly. You should see humps as your shakes move down the snaky. Some secondary waves can also be sideways. Number three, the third kind of wave is an L wave or L love wave. This kind is side to side and it's at the surface. Shake your end of the snaky left and right rapidly. That's the L wave. Number four, Imagine going to a wave pool. As the big wave passes you, you are not only lifted up and down, but also sideways, back and forth. Both actions work together to give you a circular motion. The last kind of quake wave also has circular motion. It is called the R wave or Raleigh wave. It's like a water wave. It is more difficult to make with your snaky, but try by moving your hand in a circular pattern. Your hand will move both up and down and forward and back at the same time, like reeling a fishing pole. Sort of like that. To see the circular pattern in water waves, you can see the girl in the lower right hand side of the screen in this video, and it shows that circular motion pretty well. Okay, now let's do some measurements. Number one, measure the length of the pipe that has a slinky on it in centimeters. So there you can see the measuring uh, tape and the end of the slinky. Number two, lift one end of the pipe two feet or so. Push and pull on the slinky just a couple of inches very quickly. And you should see a P wave of compressed slinky move down the pipe. Time how many seconds it takes this tiny P wave to go down the full length of the pipe in one direction. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up so it travels, so that it travels better. And I will tell you when to start and stop. Um, you'll have to use your own stopwatch. One, two, three, go, stop. One, two, three, go, stop. One, two, three, go, stop. Now, your time is not going to be exactly like one of these, but choose the closest one. So now we have the distance that the wave traveled and the time that it traveled. We can, use, we can use those to find the speed of the wave. Use the numbers in the previous two answers to put into the speed equation. So whatever number you chose for the distance, you're going to put up in the here. And whichever one of these numbers is closest to yours, you're going to use one of these four numbers for the time down there. 
do the division and you'll come up with one of these speeds. Number four. Now I'll push and pull on the slinky several times very quickly, um, but this will make a more dramatic compression. We're going to go several inches here. That's the key here. Before we just did a couple inches of movement back and forth. Now it's going to be like six inches. I'm going to make a more compressed wave. We're going to time how long this takes to go down the pipe. Again, I'll tell you when to start and stop. One, two, three, go, stop. One, two, three, go, stop. One, two, three, go, stop. Choose whichever time was closest to your timings. Use the speed equation to find the speed of the larger wave. Again, use one of these times along with the length of the pipe, which hasn't changed. Number six, what do you think is the big idea of this part of the activity? Read these three sentences and see which one do you think is more appropriate for what we just demonstrated. Number seven, what is the length of the snaky in centimeters when it's not stretched at all? Okay, so we have the same measuring tape lined up at the end there with the slinky or snaky. And there's the end of the snaky. Choose which one of these numbers is closest to that length. Number eight, time how many seconds it takes an S wave up and down to go the full length. How long does it take? Again, you do the timing. I'll tell you when to start and stop. On your marks, get set, go, stop. On your marks, get set, go, stop. On your marks, get set, go, stop. Which one of these times is closest to your timing? Use a speed equation to find the speed of the waves. Remember, that's distance divided by time. Number 10. Time how long it takes an L wave side to side to go the full length. On your marks, get set, go, stop. On your marks, get set, go, stop. Number 11. Use a speed equation to find the speed of the L wave. Which one of these? Again, use one of these times along with the distance. Number 12, the results of the speeds in this lab do not go along with the reading in the procedure. The procedure says that the L waves are slower than S waves, yet our measurements don't show a difference. Which of the following is most likely the reason for this? So read those. Which one do you think is most likely to be? Number 13. Stretch the snaky an extra 100 centimeters. Do you consider this snaky to be more rigid or more loose than before? So by stretching it here, um, it gets more tight. I can't really demonstrate this through a video, so I'm just going to tell you the answer. When it is stretched, it feels more rigid, harder to wiggle back and forth. And so we're going to say A, more rigid. This is going to model a earthquake wave going through more solid rock, more dense rock. Number 14, what is the new length of the stretched spring? Well, it was 200, so now adding an extra 100 is going to make it 300. I'll tell you that answer too. Number 15, how many seconds does it take an L wave to travel from one end to the other in the stretched spring? Okay, I'm stretching it an extra meter. And here we go with your timer. Ready, set, go, stop. Ready, set, go, stop. Ready, set, go, stop.
choose the time here that is closest to your stopwatch. What is the speed of the L wave in the stretch spring? Use the numbers in the previous two answers and the speed equation. So use one of these four numbers, whichever one is closest, plus our new distance of 300. And you'll get one of these numbers here. The big idea of this section is that by putting waves in stretched out springs, we are simulating quake waves going through different kinds of rocks. What happens to quake waves when they enter more rigid rocks? Use your observations as evidence for your conclusion. Number 18, an inchworm moves in a matter uh, most like which kind of wave? Which wave is most like a snake slithering on the ground? Choose one of those. And that's the end of the lab.